Volkswagen uses these bolts like this instead of uh, wheel studs. And get this out of here. Sit it on this way. Next thing we need to do is take this dust cap off. So this is a drum brake. The way these work is the little uh, actuators push out against this drum and they, the friction stops the car. These parts are getting harder to find, but the disc mechanisms were on more cars for a pretty long amount of time. There's more of it. And because it fits on here with just a little bit of modifications, it's it's worth changing over, I think. Plus, they look cooler, and they're actually more efficient in a lot of ways. I got that bolt and washer out of the way. Yep, this has been off a couple times. Normally, with all of these parts here, you'd want to take all of this off piece by piece. Um, when I put this together, if you remember from the video, I guess kind of finagled it together with screwdrivers and whatnot. When I was moving, I realized I have an entire kit just for this. Look at that. I had this the whole time. And we're not using that to say we're going to cheat our way through this. There's four bolts that hold the backing plate for the drums on. Everybody's into loud ASMR now. Loud ASMR. assembly and we will worry about that later because we don't have to do anything to it here and I already feel like I need more light back here like it just seems kind of dark <laughs> thanks me from the past I don't know why there's a q-tip here backing plate for the disc brake is really just a dust shield. The coolest thing I got is the spacers. They're from Lella Autosport and what they do is they make the wheels sit out just a little bit further. This is what the disc brakes mount to. Normally that would just be here. But this, like I said, spaces that out. They sent Get your hardware with uh, the uh, space. Not only because of the length, it obviously needs to be longer, but they have bigger heads on them, so you can put a little bit more torque on them more easily. So good. This is brand new paint. Painted this. I taped the, the end of it up, but uh, it's ready to go. So that has to go here. So you see that lines up with that hole there. That was originally where the uh, uh, ABS sensor would have gone. This car doesn't have that. Then we got our thing here. Grab one of these washers. I'm gonna put it through this whole bit together. And I'll just put this one into place. 
And then we can start cleaning the other ones up. All right, so those four are where they're supposed to be. Oh yeah, okay, so the other one was a 15, but now we're working with bigger hardwood. So we're using the 17. All right, this really is a tour crunch. And it's used when you have bolts on a car or just any object that need a specific amount of tightening. This was rated to be around 45. My dad has instilled in me as long as you don't go up too high, you can go a little further. My torque wrench doesn't adjust in five very well. Or I think it was 43. 47. It was something odd, so I chose to go ahead and just put it to 50. You can see the little measurements. Well, not probably very well because the light is bad. The little measurements are here. You twist, twist that and you lock it down. Put it on here. And you turn this with a uh, nice solid pressure. You don't want to be yanking it or making it bounce. You just want to get it locked in and you'll hear it. That means I'm at 50. Opposite side on the bottom. And what my dad would do is go back through them again. As one tightens, technically pushes everything closer, the other one is looser. All right, this is the disc. And before we put this on here, I'm gonna clean off the uh, residual oil. Sometimes when stuff like this is machined, they put a little bit of oil on it to uh, keep it from rusting on the shelf. That should be good. So I already the bearing goes in the back in there. It seems ready. To go. Let's rip off our safety paper, taped it up so I could paint it. Give that a quick wipe off. We're gonna put on the rubber gloves. We've gotten to the messy part. I'm gonna take this high temperature grease that I've been using since the first video. There we go. All right. So now we gotta put the front bearing on here. We're gonna put some extra stuff on it. Into all right. So that washer goes there. That's pretty greasy. We're gonna put this guy on here. Now the uh, these are interesting. They don't necessarily have a tool for these all the time because technically what you're supposed to do. You know, how tight I did that. I can't turn that by hand very easily now. You turn it till it's just easy enough to turn by hand and then you want to put your lock on it and if your lock doesn't line up move it a little bit but after your lock lined up and you've got it pretty loose where it's like you know it's in tight but it's not dragging then you put your cotter pin in there oh wow is that just about lined up oh that's so close now we got a cotter pin turn this so that you can Finished. We're just gonna put an adequate little extra amount in there. Doesn't have to be crazy. You know, like just get it in there. So this is our dust cap. This is a dead blow hammer. We'll do our best to get it in there without ending there. And it's seated pretty good. Oh, five degrees. Uh, this is the bracket for the caliper. All right, so as like I said, we're just gonna put these to sort of an estimated 30 or so because we don't have a lot of room to get a torque wrench in here anyway. So we're just gonna put it about right there and we're gonna pull it up about, we're gonna try to go a quarter turn. And that feels good. And then we'll move back to the first one. That is on.
The moment of truth. That in there. Get this on here. There you have it. Every time I work on this car, I end up wanting to go back to Forza. And what I do is I try to emulate the mods that I have done on the car for real in the game. Appreciate you guys for watching. I really appreciate any of you that have uh, helped out at my Patreon. I'm just going to sit this here. Don't forget my catchphrase. <laughs>